Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for the crypto market recap. Let's hop into these charts, see what the story is and what it may be. And remember, if you're interested in any of the services I provide, please check the links in the description for both the Patreon and Discord. Okay, so we are going to start off looking at Avalanche and Matic as we are currently long both of these positions. Uh, and yes, we're still in the green, but slightly, and we'll go over exactly what's happening today. Of course, we'll take a look at Bitcoin to get a general view of what's going on in the market. And then we'll take a quick look at XRP, Ethereum, maybe Luna, and maybe a few others if I have time. Okay, so but let's start with Avalanche. So take a look at this. So <clears throat> currently, you know, still above where we got in, but I am expecting uh, some more drawdown. All right, so I'm expecting it to come down a bit more and likely going to go under our entry, in my opinion. But of course, that may not happen. We still may get another shoot higher going into tomorrow afternoon. The reason why I'm saying tomorrow afternoon will be somewhat important for crypto is because the Federal Reserve, the FOMC meeting is going to be happening. So we're going to find out exactly what's going to be going on regarding raising rates. OK, so whatever decisions made there, even if it is decided to raise rates more, I am expecting a move to the upside, even though normally that would indicate a bearish or hawkish look on the markets what would lead to downside moves okay the reason why i don't see that happening immediately even if they do raise rates is because the the market has been pricing it in that's what all this falling was so you know it's not just an avalanche but it's in all of the markets all of crypto all of the equities everywhere okay everything's been dropping because the the investor is pricing in the raising of rates so whenever that sort of behavior happens usually the time of day when that you know expected uh event occurs you won't get more downside it's unlikely you'll likely get an a shoot to the upside because the markets like certainty they like understanding exactly what is happening what to expect predictability is very comforting so the market will go up on the news if they expected it and it occurred okay also smart money understands that like us that's why we started going along because you know you want to make sure sentiment wise you're on the other end of the masses on the other end of the retail trader and investor they're going to think it's going to come down more especially if rates are, ris are, are uh, rise higher because well that's bearish for the market Yes, it is, but it doesn't have to happen immediately. So what will happen is likely a push higher off of that news being confirmed. And then the smart money, us in this equation, will start to sell as it gets to, you know, key levels we're eyeing. And then the unfortunate dumb money will buy at those levels that we're selling at. And then the markets will turn over because the rates were being risen. That is bearish, but things don't happen immediately. Okay, price action doesn't immediately reflect the news. All right, most of the time it's ahead of the news. That's why we have markets pricing it in. All right, so we're gonna make sure that even if it does come down, we have a, a, an idea, a strategy of where we can see more support for Avalanche, particularly. Right, so for Avalanche, you know, if it does come down, look for $50 to be massive support. Okay, I do expect it to come under $50 eventually, but $50 will act as massive support. $50 to $54 will be big time support. So I expect any uh, major bounce in that area. And if I do decide to add on, it'll be as close to 50 or under around 48 bucks as I can get. Okay, so, you know, as of right now, I am still expecting more upside in the short term. All right, but we may see some downside going into tomorrow afternoon and then upside. All right, so we'll just observe. By the way, we have our roadmap, don't we? Okay, so if you're in the if you're in the trade with me, no worries. All right, no worries. This is why we only expose the account about one to two percent. All right, let's take a look at Matic. There we are. And Matic, you know, same story. All right, uh, we're in the green in this as well. It's holding up a little bit better than than uh, Avalanche, um, down but not as much. Again, you know, on pretty strong support, and Matic has even more support under it 
should it come lower all right so <clears throat> no worries here so if if it is going to break lower which eventually it will we have levels that we can start aiming for uh for a, a a pretty significant bounce to come come through okay so again no worries here and if matic you know if matic see how it, it had a nice little intraday um uh, a uh, little nice rest day from the drop so from the support had a nice little green day and then next yesterday and now today pretty slow moving day you know all within this green well this yellow candle here nothing crazy but if it has another day like this like going into late tomorrow when the uh, federal reserve will speak well you know you could probably start seeing a downward wedge sort of forming here all right and that's pretty that's pretty bullish uh, in the short term for for Matic, all right? That's somewhat that's somewhat bullish uh, for Matic uh, as it's going above support here. All right, we have to wait and see. And that wedge will start forming if it should break down sort of like this, right? And then it holds this level here because then you're gonna have something like this forming, all right? And that's what you wanna see for a reversal to start forming. You know, it doesn't mean it's gonna go to the moon, but it does mean it's very likely It'll get to the next significant resistance area, so that could be somewhere around here. And if it's if it's really weak, you know, towards the top of the wedge, so about like a dollar ten. All right. So again, this is why we keep our exposure low when we initiate a position, so we can add on to that position as the price action matures out, and we get a better view of exactly what the market's planning to do going forward, probability-wise, of course. Okay. Nothing set in stone, but we can get a general idea of what to expect. So. If you're dramatic with me again stay calm stay vigilant and i hope you remain nimble because if we do go lower which you know i see that happening um we we have places to add on to better our position all right and let's just say we do really break lower here well this level here at 75 cents to 74 cents it will act as massive support okay there's going to be a lot of demand there and you will at least see a bounce back towards 92 cents in my opinion probably a dollar all right. So if we do end up going down there, we'll definitely be adding on here and that will bring down our average entry mightily. All right. So even if it does come back to 92 cents or a dollar, uh, we'll be well in profit when that happens. OK, so again, just uh, make sure you're nimble. You control your risk and uh, make sure your alerts are on if you're following me. All right. OK, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin, see what's happening here. All right. And uh, yeah, if you uh, you're noticing, I, I drew the, you see these blue lines. So uh, if you're in the uh, Discord with me, I was uh, doing a live chat with everyone. Again, we weren't we were just talking in general, but we did go over the Bitcoin chart a little bit, and I did share. You know, I do see Bitcoin in a you know descending wedge, which is generally bullish. Okay, especially as it's coming into what I would consider major support. This orange line is major support. So you know what this tells me is there's going to be a lack of very, very small chance of a breakdown, okay? It's possible that you could see Bitcoin break down under this orange line, but in my opinion, it's more likely to come towards this orange line and hold through this, this downward uh, descending wedge until the Fed meets tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, okay? So I believe it's 2 p.m. or 2.30 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. So, you know, as we get close to that that time period, we should start seeing a, res a resolution towards this short-term pattern and the probabilities lean for it to be an upside break, okay? Because downward wedge is going into support, that's what that means most likely uh, 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 in regards to the play out of the pattern, okay? So probability-wise, you see downward wedges break out to the upside because bullish patterns do what? they veer to the downside okay it's the the smart money buyers are trying to get a better deal so they want it to come lower so eventually they can push out and then you know aim for higher prices until it gets too too expensive and then the sellers are forced to bring it down again all right so in my opinion that place will probably be towards this green line where we start seeing massive exhaustion and uh, bitcoin coming back down probably towards the orange line and then finally breaking through okay but as of right now we want to have somewhat of a bullish bias short term but we do have to keep in, keep an account even though you know it's likely that prices will go up tomorrow even if the fomc you know comes out and says hey we're going to raise 50 basis points because i believe that's priced in that that does not mean 
that Powell, you know, the, the Federal Reserve chair, could come out and say something something completely unexpected that's completely, you know, bearish or too too strong for the markets to handle. And and that could lead to a, a massive drop. OK, so that's why you don't really want to trade the meeting. You don't want to trade the announcement. That's more gambling. You just want to keep in mind that if you're in a position and you're starting to see bullish consolidation going into that meeting or at least into that announcement of the meeting, well, it's, it makes you think, all right, we're, we're likely going to get some upside even if the, the news is, you know, unfortunately bearish as long as it's within expectations, okay? If it starts breaking expectations, that's when, you know, you will see some massive moves that aren't going to be, uh, you know, expected. And uh, we probably will see massive dro uh, massive drop towards you know 30, 33,000, 30, 30, that sort of that sort of behavior. Okay, but that's not what I'm seeing. I am seeing another rise higher, um, at least in the short term, and then we'll likely see another move back towards 40,000 and maybe even 41,000. All right, somewhere near this green line. Um, but again, nothing's changed, right? Take a look, midterm. The midterm pattern is bearish, so I want to keep that very clear in your minds even if this does break out nothing has changed overall we do want to have the bias that bitcoin is still likely to come lower at some point okay and go towards thirty thousand and maybe even sub thirty thousand all right uh let's take a quick look at xrp and then we'll take a look at ethereum so xrp again still within that zone it's really not going to move out of here for a while um, again, until Bitcoin starts showing resolution one direction or the other, you're going to see XRP here. And even if Bitcoin shows resolution to the upside, I think you'll find XRP to be a bit more docile. It'll go up, but I don't think you'll find it to go up uh, aggressively at all. It'll likely want to stay within the 60 to 65 cent range. OK, again, a very strong level, uh, th this zone, very strong zone. Of uh, accumulation very attractive prices uh, if you're interested in buying so there's gonna be a lot of incentive to keep it at this level to try and accumulate as much as possible you know for the smart money that is interested in, in, in purchasing this asset okay um, but you know if it does go up and Bitcoin starts having a pretty impressive push to the to the upside you will see 70 cents 70 cents plus uh, is very likely and of course you know to the downside 50 cents 50 and a half cents it's it's so light it's so so attractive uh for for you know anyone who wants to buy for the long long term so you know this this level will be something to keep your eye on and i do see it uh holding for quite a while unless bitcoin starts doing you know a catastrophic moves to the downside going towards you know 25,000 22,000 something like that then I, I still think this level holds. But in that scenario, you will likely see a lower XRP, okay? Because whether, you know, you know it, it's just how it is in regards to that Bitcoin has the majority of the liquidity in the market. So as, as it operates very similar to an index, it is the majority of that index. So we have to keep in mind that Bitcoin, no matter how XRP looks or Luna or Solana, Avalanche Mag, no matter how they look, their their control in the index is so small compared to bitcoin that bitcoin can break their structures pretty easily okay so we want to keep that in mind that's why we make sure to look at bitcoin every time we're going to make a decision off of other coins eventually i believe that that will change as the markets mature and each asset that shows true utility uh true strength that can stand on their own two feet uh until that until that happens we have to keep looking at Bitcoin, but once that sort of uh, mature uh, market starts taking hold, then uh, then we can start looking at each asset kind of individually. Okay, um, let's take a quick look at Ethereum. So again, yep, Ethereum still holding this level. Again, I don't see this breaking until Bitcoin starts breaking under that orange line. So nothing's changed there. And once it breaks, get ready for a you know 2400, 2300 Ethereum, and then even eventually. Maybe there might be a bouncer, a bouncer two here. Eventually, you're going to see a sub 2,000 Ethereum. Okay, uh, again, there's a lot of reasons why I see that happening. The structure for Ethereum here is all to get under 2,000, in my opinion, and probably towards 15 to 1600. Um, that's what this structure is indicating to me. And plus, fundamentally, I mean, 
you, you see how expensive Ethereum is. There's a lot of issues with it fundamentally. Uh, the, the Ethereum team has had a lot of trouble trying to update their systems to try and shift to the you know proof of stake. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of issues with Ethereum fundamentally that coincide with a lower price. Uh, so we, we, we really want to keep our eye on this. But once Bitcoin starts breaking under that orange line, watch out for Ethereum to start breaking under this thick black line as well. OK, um, let's see here. I want to I'll take another look at ApeCoin because, oh, wow, it went even lower. OK, so yeah, I have not been. I actually didn't really look at ApeCoin much today. I took a glance at it while we were, if you were in the uh, live room with me, we were talking. Uh, but wow, yeah, look at that. So it's making that move towards 13 and a half cents, which, you know, I find that to be a fairly attractive level. Um, I do think we're going to see this bounce here at 13.57, 13, 13 and a half cents to so $13.50. Uh, but eventually, eventually what I do see happening is, you know, ApeCoin is likely to oscillate here, okay? So kind of range here for a while. I have to give this time to see what the bias will be. Um, it's possible it could actually be a bullish bias if, depending on how the price action forms. I have to give it time. But again, if Bitcoin starts breaking down structurally, so if the mac the macro pattern that we've been eyeing for the past couple months starts playing out. Well, you know, this is not going to hold. It's very unlikely. You'll probably will see ApeCoin try and break through. And even the even the entities or people, whoever they may be, that are playing their games in the order book here, um, they will get demolished. Okay, so if they were to try and push ApeCoin up, uh, the it's they won't be able to do it for long, and it won't be very profitable for them uh, if they try to you know really push the facts. So if, the, if Bitcoin's going down and they try and push ApeCoin up. Well, they can do it. I'm sure they can do it. The problem is the pressure they will feel uh, will likely break them down um, because the money in Bitcoin will out outweigh what they have in ApeCoin by far. So you're likely to see something like this again. Um, there's a time and place for it. This is not it. This could be an accumulated accumulation time to try and load up. Uh, and then, you know, play for a short term long back towards $17, $18. But if Bitcoin starts breaking the macro structure, um, I, I, I will say ApeCoin will probably go even lower and maybe go all the way down towards 10 to $12. Okay. And maybe even lower guys. Okay. We, we, you have to keep an account that ApeCoin is very young compared to all these other coins. Um, and it's structure, you know, it, it, there's not much information here. So if it goes lower, I, I you're going to have, you're going to start having to look for psychological levels and, you know, $10 and, and some you know, $10 is where I would see this resting. Um, it going lower than that. Well, you know, again, be very dependent on what Bitcoin is doing. Um, if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin is going back down towards 20,000, you're probably going to see ApeCoin sub $10. Okay, that that's probably what you're going to see. And again, I'm not familiar with this project. I'm just going by the chart. Uh, let's just you know what? Let's draw a quick trend line here. Um, I might see something. Hopefully my eyes aren't playing tricks on me. Wow, look at that. Okay, yeah, ten dollars, ten dollars, twelve dollars, this general area. Okay, so let you know, let's change. I'm going to change this to uh, thick black line very thick i think is a very important level okay so we draw we drew it from here which is the 20th of march to here pretty much you see all these bottom pivots right you see all these bottom pivots that are clearly showing some sort of uh, interaction with this line and now boom if it were to drop under this level we're, we're probably seeing around 10 oh 12 to 10 dollars we'll do a, we'll do a zone here okay so 12 to 10 dollars will likely be the level um, and this will be a very important level for it to hold because if it breaks under this, then, you know, then you're talking about new, new, uh, you're looking for a macro low. Okay. You're looking for a floor. And in that sort of scenario, you want to stay out of the way. Okay. You, you want to stay out of the way. You don't want to try and catch the knife when you don't know where the floor is. Um, you'll often see that if you follow my trades on discord, when things fall really, really hard, you'll, you'll get an alert that I'm buying it, right? I'm buying something. Well, I do that uh, when I have a basis of a support level that's major, that's 
right right around the corner to be hit that's or that's at that's being hit as as i'm paying the order in um i have that 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 support level that is that is proven in the past in this case you don't got anything so you want to let it find a floor and then you know eventually look for some sort of macro bullish pattern that could be a long-term accumulation that's starting to break out that could be a really a really large descending wedge of some sort um and then look to play that pattern out and then you know probably test probably test this trend line as resistance okay this this thick black trend line as resistance again we don't know if you know this is actually going to be visited if it's going to be broken all we know is it definitely has uh it definitely has a role to play this this trend line has a role to play and we want to see how price is going to interact with it once it gets there um, but before then i do see a point oscillating between 15 and half do, 15 dollars 50 cents and then 13 dollars 15 50 cents okay so keep your eye on that if you're interested in this coin i'm interested in it because i find it to be uh very interesting the price action um again i haven't called out a, a trade for it i don't think i will at least no time soon and uh and, but I do know a lot, it's very popular, so I just want to make sure I cover it in case anyone in the room is in this coin, okay? So I think that's it for, t for today. Uh, we went over everything I, I think uh, is worth going over. Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look, we'll take a look at a, a few other altcoins later on today. I, 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 I'm going to make a video uh, sp about specific altcoins that, you know, some people have mentioned to me. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, uh, release it today. Probably sometime this week. But I'll take a look at a few other altcoins. Um, so you know, just be on the lookout for that, and uh, make sure, guys, to be vigilant, to be patient, and be nimble. Love you guys. Take care.